Oh, hold on a minute. Let me just close the curtain over. Well, if I can. Let's see if that helps any. It does a bit. Hi and welcome. Joe here at Willie Cottage. Um, just do a bit of an intro before people turn up if anybody wants to come and watch me today. Um, so yeah, swag along. So Wednesday live, do me swag along, having a little chat as we go while I prep my bats that I will start to spin up next week. So what I do when I'm doing either a small project or a big project is I sit and prep all my little bits of wills out. So this one here, this is my special fibres. Hi Anne. So swag along today, lovely. So I'm just saying that um, when I'm doing my bats, whether I'm doing lots of them um, for like a big order or a guild order or any of my type of big packs, then I usually just, like when I need at least four or eight or ten loads of bats, then I just spend my time, take my time, sort out the fibres I want to use and pick them through and then separate them all into little segments. So today my plan is to blend up eight bats. Sounds a bit excessive and a lot to do, but then my brain always thinks in 200 grams. So I know with 100 grams of a bat, if I single spin it, um, spin it in singles, then I get approximately 185 to 200 yards, depending on how well I'm doing and spinning that day. Then leave it as a single and then ply it off with this. It's just arrived today, my linen cone. Look at that. Isn't that really, really pretty? It's like a coffee colour. So I'm really chuffed with this. It, it's always the same when you buy something online. You're not quite sure the colour is quite true to picture. So this is a Victor linen. Um, strong... Uh, pure strong cotton linen and it's a two four ply so on the website i had a look and it actually says it counts as a three ply but they can't there's no such thing as a three ply so they've had to word it like that but in the de descriptions that's what it says um and it works out it's a 200 gram yarn um, yarn and it gives me two measurements in here which i'm never quite sure about it says 600 meters to 250 meters i'm not sure why but i would say there's about 600 meters because it lasts me forever um, and you can use it for warping stitch crafts crochet weaving braiding and knitting with and it's so softens down over time so it's not an over, it's not an overly thin believe it or not you can actually get thinner than this but this is the this is the weight that I like to use with my weaving so yeah so that is what I'm going to be plying all this up with um, so what I'm doing at the moment is I've got some, I love this fibre, this is pearl fibre, um, it's actually a UV resistant fibre um, and it goes through the same process as plant fibres, I can't quite remember what it's made of but it is a type of vegetable pulp, I will have to look it up and find out what it's called but it does have this iridescent pearl sort of look to it, it's really really pretty and you can spin this on its own and it spins like a silk so you literally want to wrap it over your finger and spin it off like that and then I've got I've got this lovely chocolate brown bamboo and I've pulled out from my stash um, some fawn alpaca which I want to add to it because I want the browns in there so I'm just bundling up so I've stripped one length and broke them into eight little pieces now I'm going with eight um, because I think it's a round number and I should end up with quite a bit afterwards so I'm just doing this while I'm doing this so the warping worth the single plied when it, yes exactly I'm not going to do anything fancy I'm not gonna puggle my mind with mathematics on right I'm using ribbons with my warp as well as as my hand spun yarn um, I'm not going to be adding any locks to this at all like I would normally do in my weft I say normally, as I occasionally do my weft. Um, I'm just going to do literally all of it as my warp and my weft. In both the, well it will be, it'll count as a sort of a two ply, but by the time I've spun off my singles and, and plied it together with the linen, I should potentially or hopefully come out with a mix between a four ply and a sports weight. So not quite a DK but that middle ground in between. 
which means I can use my um, 10 DPI head on my loom. Because um, as long as you can get that thread to go through there, because as you know, when you use, well, I'm not using rigid head alone. And with a rigid head loom, you've got a little bit more room there for manoeuvring around. The plastic's a lot more um, forgiving. But I'm using a vintage London uh, Weave Master loom. Um, so I've got the metal, oh, what's the words of them called? The metal reeds at the back of it for me to thread through. So I can get any type of yarn through those metal reeds and I do need to change them to the polycord. I do, that's a project for another time, but they're quite expensive to buy. So yeah, definitely to change them over to the polycord and then I'll have a lot more forgiveness through that. But I only have two heddles, um, reed heddles for my actual um, loom. I have the large one, which is a 7.5, which is brilliant and that's what's on there at the moment. But the, the reed that I want to use so I can make more of a neat and tidier um, weaving experience is a I think it's a 10 dpi so that's what I want to use so then I can actually calculate the amount of war pens that I'm going to need not that I'm mathematically minded because I'm not um, I do have I have brought up the book just for me to go through and paraphrase what they advise to do and how to create the calculations generally me as I say I'm not mathematically minded so i do struggle a little bit and what i tend to do is if i try and work out the calculations of the wall pens that i need to create the length i need i could get their roundabouts but i usually feel like i fall short or i'm not quite trusting what i've come out with so i i always make sure that i've got more than enough yarn for my warping before i even think about my weft and then i get that sorted out and then if i need to go and dye up any more later on which i don't think i should have to because there's going to be a lot if i'm making eight if i'm making 800 grams or thereabouts of art bats i'm getting an average of say 190 195 uh, times two so that's just shy of 400 yards fingers crossed of warp per um per spinning once i get going right it's not actually that's a tunnel eye i end up with the same amount but instead of applying it it works out shorter so yeah so say on average so every 100 grams of bat that i create i'm going to get a, just shy of 200 grams of yardage straight off for that i'm quite happy with um so times that by eight is 1600 yards that's more than enough because i'm only doing 17 inch wide warp so what I need to calculate is the length that I need. And we did this the other day on the live chat, but I'll go through it in a minute on there. But I think it worked out about 12, um, is it 12 yards I needed? I think we worked out the calculations, but I'll go through them again in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to keep on doing this while I'm talking to you. Otherwise, I'm never going to get it done. So I've got a fawn alpaca and this lovely chocolate dark brown alpaca. I love alpaca. And I thought because I'm doing the flax, I've got the flax braid with a silky merino. I wanted something that would keep me warm in the winter, but nice and cool in the summer because they, they've such a, a straight fiber on them. There's really good properties to these because the whole point of, of alpaca fur is the temperatures that they're, they're evolving is the heat during the day and then the, the cold in, at night time where it can get to sometimes through certain times of the year and, and um, southern regions of america it can get below freezing at night time in our winter months or if not a lot more than that so these animals are have evolved to be able to protect themselves in all sorts of conditions so i wanted something that's in my coat that i can wear all year round without feeling um overwhelmed with, with heat iona stop it so yeah so that's what i'm doing so i'm just sorting out my um my alpaca fibres here, rolling up into little bits. Do you want me to tilt you down a bit or are you quite happy? Actually, if I stand back a bit and I can tilt you down. No, oh, yeah, I can't see me. I know. Anyway, so what am I doing next? So it's one, two. So I need to split this one again. So what else have I done this morning? I have got um, piled, I've sort of separated my blue merinos. So I have got diff two different colours of merino and i've come across a blue a tealy blue corridale just a small amount because as i say I, i'm splitting these all up and then when 
when I go to start weighing out each set, then what I do is I get my scales and I get a blob of each colour and I throw them in, one, two, three, four, that's it, that's done. And then I weigh them up to the amount that I want to blend off, which will be 800 grams or thereabouts, or probably just over, of fibre per bat. And then it's a matter of thinking about how I'm going to put it together. And then when I do put it together, do I want to, add, when I start blending it, do I want to add any other dashes of colours to it? Because maybe the brown and the, the blue and then these lovely creams that I've got in there, though there is hints of green, but I don't want the green to really show out. I don't mind that is a little tiny hint of a black, black, black ground, background colour. Um, just like the tiniest little pops that you're not going to notice unless you really look at it. Um, so yeah, so I've got my little tub of blues so I've got this lovely tealy blue Coradale and then I've got this denim blue and then I have got an ocean blue so they've all been put into their little piles inside my tub so I've got eight each of those so that's them put to one side and then I went through the roving and I split three different colour sections from the one back then split them into eight sections again and then i'm just going to do that again in a minute anyway <coughs> this is another alpaca but with a silk blend so i thought i would um at least half this and then split that into sections because i've got silk in my roving so i'm using 800 grams yeah i'm using approximately 800 grams for this as it goes so that I feel I've got more than enough to be able to create today I have got um what was the word yeah it's only a jacket pattern that I've got so I don't need a lot in comparison to when I made this this took up probably a little bit more fi fibre to create that fabric for this pin of a dress which I still need to sort out and then I can wear it so with this one can you see all the different colours that I used and they were all from the same bats and then I've used bamboo no it's not bamboo it's silk silk banana yarn I've added in when I'm weaving. Now I've actually found from the same supplier Yarn Yarn Fibres on Etsy. She's actually got her own website now and you can find her on Instagram. If you want to find something to embellish in that's not locks or anything like that. She's got a really lovely supply. She's based up in Edinburgh or St Andrews. Um, I think her name, I'm sure her name is Julie or Julia but you can find her on Instagram. If you can't if you can't find her let me know and I will drop a link in um, on a message. If you want to go and have a look see what she's got but i did see the other day and it sat in my basket for me to go and get that sorted out but um 100 gram weight of sari silk banana yarn um where is it see i've moved stuff around since we last did this chat um is it in here right i think it might be oh, there we go right so there's one oh Something stuck to me. Okay, so I have got, there it is. So that is sari silk that's been hand spun. Um, she actually buys these, all this lot, all the supplies come from India. Um, and she's helping sustain the local public um, into uh, the public population and to be able to sell and supply their fibers and things like that overseas in the UK. So that's an example of the banana yarn. This come from a little sample set. So that's not, let me see, I've barely used that. So there's quite a lot there. So there is 11 grams on that. And I'm sure she's got 100 gram bundles or 100. Yeah, I'm sure it is. So that's what I was looking for to put in with mine. And I've also got this and I'll debate while I'm doing it. Because this is what you do when you're intuitive weaving. You you think there's something missing as you're weaving along. Like, oh, stick a bit of this and I'll stick a bit of that in. And this is Sari Silk Scrap Yarn. So I love the colour of this. It's like a, a cross between an olive and a pewter, but it's really, really lovely. It's got that tiny, it's got a little bit of a metallic shine. So I may add that in throughout my weave. 
but only in my weft, not in my warp. Because when you start adding in chunky fibres, then you've got to think about what DPI, um, what red uh, heddle you're going to have to use, whether it's a 10, a 12 or a, a 7.5. Or if you've got really, really chunky yarns, then you're looking at a 5 um, DPI heddle. So yeah, so I'm just trying to think of all the fibres that I've already that I'm already using that's in my main wool, and how I can incorporate that with adding in other bits and pieces, because that's just the way I go. I try and be creative in my own way, uh, without it looking too obvious that I've done something um, a little bit out there. If you get my meaning, Iona, do you know this dog's a menace? <laughs> Hi Amelia, no problem sweetie. So yeah, so that is just the way I, f I, I work. I, I like to be creative, I can create, I can think, I can, I can envision it, but as I'm going, my mind might change. And I'm like, I do feel like I need a pop of orange in here or I need a, pop, a bit more yellow or I feel like the blue's overpowering and I need to add something else. So that's where having little bits and pieces like this, the banana yarn and, and the sari silk ribbon and that sort of thing. Thank you very much, Amelia. Um, having those sort of colours in there um, really does help your journey into creating something really, really pretty and unique at the same time. So, yeah, so I've saved half of this on the off chance that I need to actually um, card up some more because it's quite expensive to buy this alpaca and um i think it's called cappuccino but it's alpaca and silk and there's a lot of silk in there i think it's it's a ratio of 50 50 on this so it costs me for i think for 50 50 grams or is it 100 grams um i think it's 100 grams i've got my scales there and i've got half left yeah 55 left on that so for 100 grams it's just shy of seven quid so it is quite expensive to use so yeah, Amelia, I was just saying, I've blended, I've stripped one of my large rovings into eight small segments. And my plan is today to blend off eight um, 100 gram bats. So I've got these different colours in there, all already split up and ready for me to start weighing out to my 100 grams. So what else have I got? Oh, I've got this, this brown here. So this is a merino nylon blend and I, this is one of my favourite fibres at the moment. I do have another one around but I can't find it anywhere. So this I wanted to use for my main bulk of my brown. So I'm just going to split this up quickly, just find the, the beginning of it. So yeah, this is what I've got. So I'm going to go, I'm going to read through in a minute in the Get Weaving book that I've got, her explanation for calculations for people that don't know. I can't do it. I, I try. I really do try. As long as I can figure out how much I need for the warp and how much I want to, um, how wide I want the actual thing to be, then as far as I'm concerned, for me, I'm quite happy with that because I'm already going to have more than enough spun up or I can just go off and spin it up and then from a weft later on, it shouldn't be a problem to reevaluate that and redo them or re-blend it and dilute down the 100 gram bats that I've got already because i'll only spin up say four five hundred grams to make sure that i've got more than enough which i definitely will do so i'm going to put that in my merino box there with the blues and then we'll um we'll have a quick chat about how to measure out or how to work out your calculations and if anybody's got any questions or has any tips for me let me know and so I have been weaving for, I say for a long time, I've been weaving since when I was younger and I weaved a bit in my 20s, but then life takes over. Beautiful brown, same colour as your sweater. It is very similar to your sweater. Your sweater, actually, I thought it had like a, maybe an undertone of green in there somewhere because it had that olivey brown colour. I really love the colour of that jumper. Oh, Amelia, I've done my body on my jumper. I'm onto my sleeves now. I'd be very proud. I meant to send you a picture last night, but uh, do you know, I had one of those days where I just couldn't be asked doing anything yesterday. I haven't even uploaded my video for today, which I should have done. It's very naughty of me. I will get that uploaded later on at some point, and that's a blending video this afternoon. Though I might actually, no, it's not. It's a blending, it's a gradient video, wasn't it, on the art bat? 
um, and how to gradient and spin from that. But then I suppose if I've got one of these already blended up, I can always spin from one of these and do that on my video. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Just get there, nearly there, nearly there. You're proud of me, Amelia, I know. I have completed a jumper before, but Aunt Kath stole it. She gave me 50 quid for it and said, I'm having it. Yeah, I will, I'll definitely post you a picture later on. I'm very chuffed with myself. So I cast off the bottom of it last night and I left it, I gave myself a good break. And then um, it's definitely gonna, definitely gonna stretch once it's been um, washed, that's for sure. Okay, so what's next? So that's the bulk of my fibres. This is the wool that I divvied up. Okay, I've got to still split this off into the X sections. Um, yeah, no, I know, and I will definitely get it sorted. But I think what I'll do, and I'll, because I'm already up here blending, when I do the next bit after I finish my live chat, I'll blend up another one and I'll sit and spin it off. And then you can see, because I'm just going to do it as a single, so you'll see how the gradient works, and then I'll apply it up with my yarn. Love that brown and blue, would never have thought about it. Do you know, brown and blues and creams, I just find them such homely colours. Very soothing. So there is, there is a tint of maroon in there from the Espresso Bean dye from the Dharma dyes. And then you've got the lichen green. Well, actually, it wasn't even supposed to be green. It was supposed to be um olive brown and i don't know what dharma's done with their dyes in the last batch but it's not olive brown anymore it's flaming olive green so then you end up with these broken pigments which is why i love this wool this is merino with silk and um flax and somewhere in the chemical construction of everything that goes on the process when you dye in this wool i never seem to get a completely yeah exactly seaside colors and definitely I never get a completely true solid color through it which I actually don't mind I fell in love with this fiber at Christmas when I was doing the Christmas advents uh, with this fiber and I just love the way that it dies so you've got these patches it's not solid and you've got these different shades that it catches and that's with the silk in there and so it catches on the silk and sometimes it'll catch on the flax but eventually that will wash out and I'll end up with these lovely soft fawny colors so yeah that i've got things falling out my chef so yeah i've got to do this one yet anyway and break that up into sections so i've got the the blue was it the blue section first so i'll just take that out and then i, I literally oh split that and then i take out this greeny color section just as i'm going down into the the tan and i will split that and then I'm left with this piece going into the champagne and the bronzy colour. Now, I don't mind that they're not completely matching. It doesn't bother me an iota because it really doesn't matter. You're going to end up with spots and spits of colours all throughout. So then I split it again in half and then split them down the middle. And then I make my little nest sop. Oh. Do that like that. Split that one down the middle. So that's me got eight on that colour. And I literally wind it off and stick it in my colour bucket. So I know where everything is. So when it comes to me blending, when I'm trying to weigh out in a second, I want to um, make sure I've got 100. So if it means that I've got, have to use two little bundles of each colour to create the 100 grams that I need in, then I can play it by ear as I go along. But my potential is to create eight 100 gram bats. So that's one, two, three, four, five from that one section, six. You can tell I worked in catering because you've got to have a method in your madness. You've got to be organized when you're doing big things like this and big orders. You've got to have a process, otherwise you might as well just call it quits and, and forget it. Because you just get yourself into such a model if you don't have a methodical brain. I can't do maths, but I've got common sense. 
Right, so literally, so it's not this colour I need next. I'm going to point that there. So it's the other one I need next, this one. Because that's the way that my um, my box sits. Is these different colours first. Oh, and then split that in half again. And then split that in half again. One. So you can imagine what I'm like when it comes to Christmas Advents because this is exactly what I'm doing. I do all of this at Christmas. Well, I start, I start actually doing all of this in August. Start dyeing it all up. Start separating it out into little colour things and then stick them all in bags. So I know exactly where I am and who needs what, what thing is plied up. Um, blended up. And then I separate all those 100 gram bats into the amounts that I need. And then if I have to add a little bit of extra weight from somewhere, then that's fine. But at the end of the day, it's all majority the exact same to everybody. It's just a pro it's just a process that I go through. I just find it so much easier. I could organise an army in a hurricane. So what does it what uh, that braid weight was two hundred grams. That's exactly how much that was. It was a 200 gram roving that I dyed up in one tray batch. Um, exactly the same process I did in that video the other week there. And where I laid them out going along like a snake all the way up the top. And then dyed it as a gradient throughout. That's exactly how I did it. Iona, you're driving me potty. Stop licking. This child... Honestly, she's just come off the back of her heat and she's still driving us all potty. Oh dear. Come up and say hello. Come up and say hello. There you go. Okay, and I don't know. Right, that should be her happy. It's Phil's birthday today. And he's downstairs. I don't know what he's up to. He's, I gave him his birthday cake this morning. And I've told him, right, I've at it. Eat it all day long for all I care. It's your birthday. So he's been eating a birthday cake, a cupcake sweet, a cupcake birthday cake with sweets all in it. It's just about some fill up because he does love his sweeties. So he's downstairs. He common sense better than any degree. Yeah. Life is a degree. People with degrees can't figure out life. There we go. So that box there is 400 grams of hand dyed merino silk and flax fibre. It's all done and dusted. There I was just showing, uh, it came today, Amelia, my cone that I'm going to be using for um, plying up my singles with. So it's a copper, a copper colour. Well, it's coffee cappuccino sort of colour it's really really lovely and I'm really pleased with it because I was dreading the colour that was going to come I wasn't sure if it would be exactly as the picture said and with linen it's got such a nice see the shine on that so that will soften down as well um, through time as linen does which is perfect right so quickly just get over this hillard of um, technical jargon Right, so I'm just saying this for anybody that's never done this before. So my pattern is a jacket. Yum cake, happy birthday. 60 isn't that bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a subject we're not allowed to speak about. Though the message in my card this morning, this, oh, I lost it. I couldn't find the card and I've just gone downstairs and remembered exactly where to put it with this gigantic 60th birthday pin badge. <laughs> right so yeah so i've got this one so i'm going for version b and um i was talking about this on saturday on my live chat so if you missed this you can catch it i'll always mention it over the weekends on the saturday if anybody wants to just probe me for some questions so for this jacket i'm having to go for a medium size which gives me a bust allowance of 38 to 40 inches so because it's a jacket, I needed to take that into equation. Um, there's no point going for my hips because, I mean, it's sitting there. But my hips are roughly about that as well anyway. They're, well, they're more of a 36, 38. Um, but it's my back. My back's getting big. I'm getting a big barreled back. Um, so what we got? Right. So for the measurement that I need for my pattern, 
it says it's 41 centimetres times 363 centimetres, or in inches, 16 and a no, that's wrong. Yeah, 16 and a quarter inches by 143 inches. So, it went, no, I've told them we're supposed to be going um, over to Bath and Sway. I've got to try and book a table, but wait to find out. His shifts aren't being announced until the end of the week. So it's a night nightmare trying to book anything in advance because he doesn't know what he's doing from one week to the next. So we're supposed to be going for afternoon tea on the Orient Express that um, is stationed over at Bassensway, which is on the way to Keswick. So his mum wants to take him out for an afternoon tea or a brunch or whatever he wants. So I've told him he's wearing it then. He wasn't happy, but I'll make sure he wears it. Right, so for that, yeah, so for my... my my width of my warp for the weft, I need a one and a half foot or 16 and a quarter inches, but I need to add on 10% to allow for shrinkage. So in my mind's eye, and when I did my pinafore, I think that was the measurements I had last time on my pinafore. So I actually increased mine up to an inch or just over an inch. I think I actually may have gone for an, an inch and a half, that sort of um area just because i was it was the first time i'd ever done it and i was a bit nervous about not quite having enough so i think so really 10 percent of 16 is 1.6 if i was to times that by two so there's allowance on both no actually no that's all i'd need so 1.6 so a cent that would roughly equate to what a centimeter and a half added on so that would take that up to just shy of 17 inches so that's where i'm going to go on my warp so 17 inches or just over one and a half foot wide is what I'm going to be looking for. Now the length of it, so we calculated this up the other day and we worked out that it would be 3.97 yards. So on top of that I want to add for the end for warping um, on my cloth, so the end and the beginning I need at least 12 inches to give me warping allowance. So add that on there. So roughly it works at about four and or four and a half foot or something like that. That I'm, or four and a half yards is what I'm looking for for the yardage. Um, so yeah, that's what our twelve foot is really where we're looking at. Twelve to thirteen foot is what I'm going to need. You do know I don't know my maths. I went and googled what is yard, uh, what's inches in a yard. So I just put it all in there because I cheat. I've got my calculator on my tablet if I need it. Right anyway. I can do maths, but it I have to think of it in an old-fashioned way because I do old school maths. You should see the maths that the kids do these days. They don't they they do them adding up and back to front and it just makes no sense in my head. It used to confuse me when my daughter used to come up from school. Can you help? I'm like, I can't figure out how you're doing that. You've got your tens, hundreds, and units all in the wrong direction, love. So the might of arguments, so I was like, right, just ask your teacher when you go to school because I have no idea how to do it. Um, right, so warp calculations for anybody that are out there and they're watching this tomorrow once it comes back on the YouTube, um, you're wanting to do calculations. So it says here a yarn guide. So if you're using a four ply yarn, you're looking at 18 um, wraps per inch. So like if you get an inch, an inch wide ruler and wrap it around there and they say to wrap bo both your weft and your warp yarns together i do too it's the best the kids have no clue what they're doing no because what's the point of changing maths if it's worked fine for the last four thousand years go and try and not do it it makes no sense phonics don't understand phonics there's no need for it if you want to go and learn about phonics go to university just you what was it when we were always taught the three r's reading writing and arithmetic that's all you need when you're a kid. Don't complicate things. Right, so four ply sport fine, a sports weight or a fine yarn. So 18 wraps per inch around your ruler. So she was saying in here, I was reading earlier on, use both your weft and your warp yarns and wrap them both around and that will give you the amount that you're going to need. Okay, um, and she says for that you'll need a 10 DPI head or your read size. Okay, oh, actually, yeah. So I don't know why she, I mean, for us, I've only ever known them as 10 
7.5, a 5 or a 12 on my, on, my, on my reads. But she's saying that's a read size is US and then gives a suggested UK size of a 30 over 10 centimetre or a 20 over 10 centimetre. I don't understand that. So I'm going with the US ones because that's the only way that I know. They can, um, can't even give you change at the store if the machine doesn't tell them. <laughs> We used to have, I don't know if you've ever seen a program called Open All Hours. It's an old 80s, was it 70s or 80s, Ann? Open All Hours with, um, Al, not Alf Garnet. Oh, it's got David Jason, the actor, in it from back then in the day. And, um, yeah, they used to have this dodgy till that whenever they went to shut it, it would open back up on them. Or whenever Jason would go under the till to get something, the till would pop out and he'd smack his head in the back of it. I used to work in pubs and we had tills like that and in working in a pub you have to have it all calculated up in your head before you even get to the till. They don't do that now. Iona, right, out. Go down and see Dad. Go on. Sat there scratching. Anyway, so she says warp calculations, the length of each individual warp thread or the end will be the length that you want the finished piece to be plus an extra 10% for the take up. Then you need to add on enough extra to tie the warp to the loom, specifically the front and back warp sticks. This is known as loom allowance and is an average of 24 inches for an average riddle heddle loom. Two riddle, rigid. Iona's a menace at the moment. She's got this complacent scratching all the time. To find the total number of ends, multiply the required final width of your finished piece by the reed side you found from your warp, see left. So I'll read that in a minute. Finally, calculate the total warp length by multiplying the length of a single end by the total number of ends required. For a finished piece of 30 inches long and 12 inches wide, using a 5 DPI reed, each end would be. So, finish length would be 30 inches, plus 10% for take up, um, three inches, so that's 33 inches. So then add on your loom allowance, which is 24 inches, and then the total rounded up would be 57 inches or 143 centimeters. So the number of ends would be 12 times 5 dpi, and would give you 60 ends that you would need for a 12 inch warp that is 30 centimeters long. Yeah, because you would actually use 57 inches. So the total warp length needed, therefore, would be 57 inches times 60 inches, and that would give you an equation of 95 yards collectively. Okay? Hence, I'm thinking yardage when I'm spinning up. So going by that and then putting that in half for me, because I'm looking at 17... 17 inch wide warp so 12 inches so if I was to break that down I would need 80 inches um, 80 ends for um, if I was using a 5 dpi and I would need a calculation of about 125 yards so if I was spinning that up and my average is 190 to 195 I need 125 yards I'm only going to need one skein of yarn plied with my linen on a single yarn. Do you know what I mean? So do you get me so far? I hope I'm explaining it right. Because I, I can't explain this without using a book. Because I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, that my head hurts. I generally warp on my, I tape off the measurement that I need on my, on my reeds. So I'll, fig, I'll find my middle, my centre on my reed. I will measure out. 17 in between so that's what 16 and a half inches either side of my center um and then i will warp that center out center out and then if i feel i need to add on an extra couple of warping sections then i can add that but for me i can use my little bars in between to count how many warps i'm going to need per inch of that um, and that's just how I do it. Everybody does it differently. I know technically it's not right and I might get spammed by people. You're not doing that right. If you're going to do it, you need to do it properly. Whatever works, it makes it easier for everybody else. And it doesn't really matter. Because what's the point of getting yourself so emotionally upset that you can't figure out your calculations when really if you just spin off more than what you think you're going to need 
and then warp it and then see how you go it's not it's not it's supposed to be a labor of love not a labor of i want to throw this out the window that's how i see it um so yeah so really you just want to make sure that your your warp yarn's going to be thick enough and strong enough to go through your heddles without snapping which is common sense um you can use different yarns in there oh and top tip as well that i do thanks to um or oh, the australian woman oh flippy neck amelia you mentioned kelly casanova that's it kelly casanova mentions that when you're warping add an extra yarn either side and miss a gap and feed them through and that's your slevenge uh, slevages ends so it makes sure that you you're no, because you know when you're weaving, you sort of it, it is straight, but when you start to put your weft in, it starts to just bend in a little bit, but it's still all really straight, and that's just natural. But to have these two extra ones that I gap between. Hiya, Danielle. Welcome, lovely. Um, you'll probably have to watch this again tomorrow because I'm I've done all my explanations, and I'll end up giving myself a migraine if I have to go through it again. So, when you weave, when you're warping up your loom. When you get to one end, miss a hole and put a warp thread through there, the exact same length as the rest of them. And then when you get to the other end, miss a gap and put your warp end through there. And when you're weaving, regardless of what you end on on either side, when you get to these two little bits, over one all the way through and under the other. And then when you come back, it's over one and under the other. And what that does, it helps keep your fabric nice and tidy and it gives you a really lovely finished edge top tip thank you Callie Casanova you're a genius so she's actually mentioned using a fishing wire before you like on a fishing reel and using one of using that down the sides as well maybe counter it off with a balance weight at the back never tried it can't say it works but the last three weaves that I have done on my London uh, weave master downstairs i've used that technique and it's been flipping brilliant i have to be honest i don't really have a problem with wonky edges on my weaving i don't have a problem with that at all but i tried it and it was brilliant really great so yeah there's your weaving techniques anybody got any questions or whatever there's loads of resources out there to find the information but then you, whenever i do my live chats just there's quite a few people that are come on my live chats that actually weave so just give a shout out and somebody will be able to answer your question if you're stuck. Because I certainly will be asking questions if I get stuck. Especially when it comes to explaining, which is really, really hard if you're not that te technically minded when it comes to something like this. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Right, so I am now going to weigh out because I've got 15, 17 minutes for my live, I think. So I'm just going to weigh out quickly and then blend off this up blend off this um bat then you can see what i'm aiming for right so it's going to be a bit of a factory process going on ladies right so i have got my scales on so i'm going to go for my main hand dyed wheels first before i touch anything else so i'm going one little ball which is giving me three grams 10 grams so and then the cream and then the green so what it's telling me is out of those i've got 24 grams so what i want to ideally do is now add in the big brown i'm just pump them out there a minute and then the tealy blue and then the marine blue is that marine blue as well it is the marine blue hold on a minute let me just find it and then one of the darker blues so that takes me up to 65. So these fibres are actually the heavier ones, the ones with the silks in, the bamboo, the um, pearl fibre and the alpacas are quite heavy fibres. But in that, just because they're heavy doesn't mean that they're going to take you as far on your spinning. So I don't mind if this goes over a little bit. So there is my alpaca and silk blend. There is my rose fibres. There is my dark brown alpaca and my fawn alpaca. So they're in there. 
Right, next, I need to figure out if I want to add... I want a little bit of texture, I want it to have a slightly tweeder look, so I'm debating whether to put in these, these wool and cotton doofity doof bits in there, or do I want to add some gold sari silk? I have got some really bright tangerine orange flax and I have got some natural flax okay so I've got those three choices to add in alternative well not alternatively but to bring up my weight I do have some lovely black natural it's called dark grey merino so it's not been dyed it is a merino wool top but it's dark grey you hate neps Anne I love neps I love the popping candy ones so I'm wondering whether to add some of this in to break down the browns and the blues and the creams add in another dimension though I am one but when I add this in one of these in then that will give him a five I like things to be uneven so I'd either stick with three colors or if it was a plain color I would add in two other two other highlight tones or three other highlight tones on a plane like this um, but because I've got quite a lot of neutrals in there and not a lot of pop going on I might add in this and I think actually I will so I'm going to split this I have got 100 grams of this oh. so let's see I'm gonna two four it's not going to give me a lot but it's going to help create the color that I need and oh my scales have just gone off did I lift all this out right back to zero Right, 87. That took me up to 100 grams on that, but adding in that great. So I'm just going to pop this over here. Um, now, shall I go a bit of goldy colour? Just to give myself a little bit of pop of colour throughout, because then that'll give me my Tweedy. I do have a duck egg blue. Well, not like this tealy one up here. I do have this one which is teals and it's got purples in there so what do you think go something light or something more dark suggestions don't roll if i want to add in any more flax i'm really about yeah i'm not sure if i want to do that but do i do this which one and blue or yellow or a bit of both i could do a bit of both Right, so I'm at 100 and that. I need to decide what I'm going to add in the sari silk. But I don't know what colour to go with. The lighter one, the gold one. Right, okay. So if I go for that as a length, if I do two strips, then I know what length I need when I come to do the others. So where are we at on that? Because there's hardly anything in that. Two, oh, I'll take a bit off that. I don't want it overpowering. Okay, so we'll stick with, that's supposed to be three grams, so I'll plonk that over there and I will um, blend this up. So this is where I have to decide. Take the yellow and the different texture. Yeah, I think, I think the yellow, because it's, it, though it is in your face, once it's been spun up, it should break down quite nicely in between, but I don't want to do too much of it. So I just plonk that to one side. And then I will be able to decide that in a minute. So I'm just going to see if I can bend this down without it falling. Oh, you stupid thing. There we go. So I need to now decide, do I want to spin it up in a gradient or do I want to do it as a, a, a free-for-all, shall we go with? So I'm just putting my colours out to one side at the moment. This is my process. This is what I do. So I've got this blue there. And then I use, they're my highlight colours, so I always stick them to one side. So they're with the sari silks. That's my alpaca, so I'll sort that in a minute. There's my other blue. 
So I'm just going to split those ones in together. And then I've got my die yarns. So there's another blue. I'm just splitting them into twos because I'm just going to do them as two layers and add in my embellishments as I go. There's another one. That's the greeny, browny coloured part of that roving that I had. And there is the one that was dyed with champagne. Oh, so it's more of a creamy beige sort of colour. So that's my baseline, all of those. Hold on a minute, I forgot the brown. And I'm going to split that into four. Because I might finish off with that on the top. All right, stick that there. And I have still in here got my alpacas and my silk ends. So I will use those as I go along and add them in when I think it suits. So where should we start? I think I'll start with a brown and get this going. So it's going to be a semi gradient. So I'm using the brown as a base because I have got quite a bit of it. So from there, I am then going to use my hand dyed. And I have to remember the sequence all the way through. So I'm going blue. Then this greeny mottled one with the hints of maroon and brown in there. So I will slightly overlayer that. You can see that coming out now. And then the champagne. So I'll stick that on the end there. Right, so what I want to do now is add in my little bits. So I think what I'll do is I'll create these in a gradient as well. And split them up. And I will start with the brown on top of the blue with the dark shades and then I will use the alpaca with silk there we go and then the fawn one I will put over this far end so can you see how that's going now so from that point I want to now break down the layer so I'm going to use this dark grey merino natural merino and you're all going to go oh no what you've done honestly girls this is how my blending is with all my bats you get pops of everything throughout if it's if it's a solid gradient if it's a solid gradient bat then I'll say so if it's a mixed layered gradient bat then this is what it is it's because it's got little base layers of colors that you'll see that are continuously throughout your gradient so I'm just going to tighten up this right so on top of this now I'm going to do my blue so I'm just going to open that up a little bit so there we go so there's the dark denim blue then the ocean blue, which I will fold over the top of that a little bit. There we go. Like that. And then I will get this tealy. Well, it's more blue, but it has got a slight green tinge to it. And I'm just going to add that on the end. Then I'm going to get some of my rose fibre. Well, not my rose fibre, my pearl fibre. And I'm going to plunk that straight on top. And then I'm going to add in some of this yellow sari silk. Just give that a quick harden, excuse the scratches. That's all packed down now. And then start the exact same process all over again. So this is what I call a semi-gradient art bat. You say you've got 
blocks of colour in between layers of gradient colours. So next is the hand dyed, so that goes on there. Okay. Then this one with the greeny fawny colours in there. There we go. And lastly on this one is the champagne one. That a quick card in a packet down. So instead of where am I going next with this? I was going to go with the black. So I'm going to put the black down now because I don't want this to show through right at the very beginning when my bat's been finished. This is just a, a highlight or an accentuating coloured palette. Right, so we're back to doing, where, we, where did we go? Blues, blues and browns. So I think it's back to these ones next this time round and then adding my alpacas and that on the very top. But in between I'll put another layer of sari silk instead. Then the next blue in there, just open it up a little bit so we can actually go through without jamming, she says. There we go. And this little hint of tealy blue at the very end. Pack that down. There you go. I'm going to turn on my little light and you can see what this looks like in a minute. Right, so last but not least, I'm going to now go back in and add in my brown alpaca and the fawn on the outside the silk blend of alpaca in the middle I'm going to get a little piece of this sari silk can add it in now while I've still got loads of fibre sat on the back of this on the liquor go in and do that and then my pearl fibre and now catch all these fibres and put them back on the back drum So that's that ready to come off now. Oh, this is going to be really nice. Now, when we're talking about weaving and everything else, they do say to do a test swatch. Personally, I don't do test swatches. Um, but then if you're using lots of different types of fibres um, and rib mixed with textured ribbons and stuff like that in your weaving, then I would definitely, if you're fortunate enough to have a small um, loom to practice on, to be able to do that and afford to be able to use up that yardage of fibre, then by all means go ahead and do it and then wash it and then see how it comes out for you to be able to do your swatch um, of woven fabric. But to be fair, I don't do knitted swatches neither. <laughs> but I've never had I've never had a problem with any weavings that I've ever done that's not had a swatch on it. So that is what it looks like at the moment. You've got all those layers of colours in between, and I would just flap it out.
and go. So I'll just take it over here and then I'll grab you off the stand. And then you can see what this looks like. Right, can you see? There we go. So that's what it looks like. Stretched out a little bit. You can see all those colours in there. There you go. That is what I'm going to be working with. Fingers crossed. It's not too... Oh, a minute. Let me get you in there. No, it's the bottom one. Oh, do you know? There we go. Hold a sec. Definitely need the, need the gold to make it pop. Beautiful. Well done. Thank you very much, Anne. Yeah, I think it definitely needed something extra. I was thinking got like the orangey tangerine colour, but I thought that would just be too much. Why won't this go in? Behave. Yeah, I, th I just thought that the orange might be just too much in my face. And then that, once that's spun up and then paired off with this, is going to look really, really pretty. And I definitely think those colours, I can get away with wearing that as an all year round um, wrap jacket without feeling like, oh, I should only wear this in winter because it's quite dark colours. The pops of yellows in there. You have to have a go, it's beautiful. Oh, I have to go, it's beautiful. Thank you very much, Amelia, for popping over. I am now just gonna end this off and get going anyway, cause I've been on here for an hour. And it's really quick today. I think it's about the amount of information that I have to go through. But, you know, next week it'll be spinning. I'll probably still be blending these on Saturday when I do my live chat on Saturday. <laughs> because <laughs> um, I have got eight of them to do um, so yeah next week I'll be spinning and if you've any, got any questions or whatever then just let me know I'll make sure I've got all my books with me for anybody that maybe pops on to the live chats and, and wants a bit more information or blending ideas or something like that see you later me I'll catch up with you later and I'll send you a picture over onto your Instagram in a sec oh, later on because I've got to pop out so yeah thank you very much everybody for joining me today i really really appreciate your support and i i've actually created a hashtag so if you do if whenever you're doing any spinning or you're blending up for your own colors or coming up with ideas if you hashtag swag woolly cottage on instagram then we can sort of create a collective collage of what we've been up to it would be absolutely brilliant but i will mention that later at the weekend again as well See you later, Anne. Thank you very much. This will be back on YouTube for you to re-watch tomorrow. It takes about 12 hours for it to upload. Thanks, Danielle. See you later. Bye.